Good day everyone. I am Junal An Ihamon, a BSN English student and today I will be going to continue the discussion in Unit 3, The Teacher and the Community, specifically Adapting to External Environment. Adapting to the external environment is important for teachers and communities, particularly when it comes to changes in national standards and frameworks, internationalization, and globalization. Before we proceed to the discussion, let us first know the learning objectives of this topic. We have for knowledge, define national standards and frameworks globalization and internalization in adapting to external environment for skills analyze the roles of the teacher inside the and outside the classroom in globalization and for effective show concern on the effects of school and community and vice versa so what is external environment in education some examples of this include social matters such as fights, a student suicide, personal matters, and poor academic performance. However, political and economic issues such as school board elections and mismanagement of school funds are also included in possible external issues. Another question is how influential the external environment in teaching and learning process. Several factors can affect learning ability including seating, light, the noise, and even color. Students who study in a positive learning environment have been shown to be more motivated, engaged, and have a higher overall learning ability. So here are some ways in which teachers and communities can adapt to these changes. First, we have the national standards and frameworks. Many countries have established national standards and frameworks for education which set out what students should know and be able to do at different stages of their education. Teachers can adapt to these changes by ensuring that their teaching aligns with these standards and frameworks and by using them to guide their lesson planning and assessment. So the national framework is designed to be evolutionary, providing a vision, principles, and structures for jurisdictions and the profession to align current or proposed standards for teaching. The national framework does not provide standards but presents the parameters within which they can be developed, outlining care dimensions and attributes for standards that allow the development of generic, specialist, and subject-specific standards. It embodies principles to strengthen the definition and articulation of the teacher's work. So as you can see on your screen, these are the principles to strengthen the definition and articulation of the teacher's work. So therefore, communities can also support these changes by advocating for high quality education that meets the the standards and by working with schools to ensure that they have the resources and support they need to implement effectively the said assessment. The second one, we have the internationalization. So within the increasing globalization, it is important for teachers and communities to be aware of the international dimensions of education. So this includes understanding of global issues and perspectives and ensuring that students have the skills and knowledge that they need to be successful in an increasingly interconnected world. So internationalization emphasizes the relationship between and among nations, people, cultures, institutions, and systems, while globalization stresses the concept of worldwide flow of economic ideas, culture, and etc. So it is a process of change which is tailored to meet the individual needs and interests of each higher education entity. Consequently, there is no one-size-fits-all model of internationalization so adapting a set of objectives and strategies which are involved and for branding purposes only negates the principle that each program institution or country needs to determine its individual approach to internationalization based on its own clearly articulated rationalis goals and expected outcomes 
So this recognizes that the internationalization process is driven by an assessment of individual needs and priorities and that a formulaic, formulaic or latest FAD approach is not appropriate, beneficial or sustainable. So this route can also present challenges. At the same time, there are countless examples of positive initiatives which illustrate how collaborative scholarship, cross-border education exchange, and campus-based internationalization strategies contribute to the development of individuals, institutions, nations, and the world at large. So the benefits of internationalization are many and varied. So, so are potential risks and unintended consequences as well. So it also acknowledges and builds on local, national, and regional priorities, policies, and practices. Another is that internationalization is intended to complement, harmonize, and extend the local dimensions, not to dominate it. If this fundamental truth is not respected, there is a strong possibility of backlash and for interna internationalization to be seen as a homogenizing or hegemonic agent. Honoring and building on local culture and context is a fundamental tenet of internationalization. So in internalization, we, we have the so-called academic mobility. So several countries are investing in major marketing campaigns to attract the best and brightest talent to study and work in their institutions in order to supply the cold brain power for innovation and research agendas. The complexities and changes related to academic and profession mobility should not be underestimated, nor should be potential benefits. But it is impossible to ignore that the latest risk of for attracting international students and academics for brain power and for economic generation. So the original goal of helping developing country students to complete a degree in another country and then return home to contribute to national development is fading fast as nations compete in the 21st century, the brain race. Many believe that modern information and communication technologies and the movement of people, ideas, and cultures across national boundaries presents new opportunities to promote one's culture to other countries and to enhance the fusion and hybridization of cultures. An important benefit is a greater understanding of cultural diversity and hopefully stronger intercultural appreciation and communication skills because education has traditionally been seen as a vehicle of acculturation. These arguments focus on the specifics of curriculum content, language of instructions, particularly the increase in English, and the teaching or the learning process in international education. So teachers can adapt to these changes by incorporating international content into their teaching, such as teaching about global issues, cultures, and even language. They can also participate in professional development opportunities that focuses on internationalization. Another is communities can support these changes by promoting cultural exchange and international opportunities for students, such as study abroad programs or international partnerships with schools in other countries. Lastly, we have the globalization. Globalization has radically transformed the world in every aspect, especially transformed the world economy which has become increasingly interconnected and interdependent. And it also made the world economy increasingly competitive and more knowledge-based, especially in development Western countries. So globalization has had a profound impact in education as it has on many other areas of life. Teachers and communities can adapt to these changes by promoting a global mindset that embraces diversity and promotes cultural understanding. Teachers can adapt by incorporating technology and digital resources into their teaching to connect with students and educators around the world. They can also collaborate with educators in other countries to share best practices and ideas. So what does it mean to be a global teacher? Being a global teacher means having a broad perspective on education and a commitment to prepare students for success in a globalized world. 
It involves understanding the interconnectedness of different cultures, economies, and societies and using that understanding to inform your teaching and interactions with students. So this document calls on teachers in schools around the world to promote education at all levels of an international dimensions and global perspective in and to understand and respect all people and their cultures, values, and ways of life to become aware of the increasing global interdependence between people and nations and to understand the necessity of the international solidarity and cooperation. Teachers, I believe, are the most responsible and important members of society because their professional efforts affect the faith of the earth. This quote attributed to Helen Caldicott highlights the crucial role of the teachers play in shaping the future of our society. Teachers are responsible for educating and guiding the next generation of leaders, innovators, and problem solvers. The knowledge and skills they impart to their students will have a significant impact on the future of our planet. Beyond just teaching academic subjects, teachers also serve as role models, mentors, and advocates for their students. They help to instill values like empathy, respect, and critical thinking that are essential for creating a better world. Through their work, teachers have the power to inspire and motivate their students to become agents of positive change in their communities and beyond. In short, Teachers play a vital role in shaping the future of our society and have a tremendous impact on the fate of the earth. Their dedication and professionalism deserve our utmost respect and support. Okay, so let's proceed to the rules of inside and outside classroom. The rules of inside and outside cl classroom activities, as you can see on the screen, are both important for a well-rounded education. Inside classroom activities refer to the formal teaching and learning that takes place in a classroom setting, while outside classroom activities refer to the informal learning experiences that take place outside of the classroom. So as educators, teachers play a critical role in facilitating both inside and outside classroom activities. So let's proceed to the roles of a teacher in society. The role of a teacher in society is very important because they have a significant impact on the development and growth of the younger generation. They help shape the future by providing students with the knowledge, skills, and values they need to succeed. They play a critical role in fostering personal growth, promoting social justice, and building a strong sense of community, all of which are essential that is for a healthy and thriving society. Okay, so the effects of schools on the community and vice versa. Schools and communities are closely intertwined and they have a significant impact on each other. And by working together, schools and communities can create a more positive and supportive environment for students and help in ensuring that all students have the resources and support they need to succeed. Overall, Adapting to the external environment in education requires a commitment to staying up to date on changes and trends and a willingness to embrace new approaches and ideas. By doing so, teachers and communities can help prepare students for success in a rapidly changing world. I hope you learned something from my discussion. Thank you and have a great day. Bye!